Now here's where it kind of gets a little bit tricky. If I turn on the floor, you're going to see, okay, uh, yeah, it's right on my floor, but you're going to see uh, down here is the real center, uh, the zero, zero, zero world axis of ZBrush. What you want is this entire object to be kind of centered on here. You could hit W and turn on move multiple and then, you know, with all these selected, you can control shift drag uh, over all of these subtools and you can move them all and you can center it yourself. And if you're not quite sure where that is, actually I should probably talk about this. If you go over here to draw, you're going to see your elevation set to negative one. If you set that to zero, the floor is going to snap to the world axis. Uh, but by default, it's set to negative, elevation set to negative one. And that's because uh, it puts a floor at the lowest point of the bounding box of one, uh, your lowest subtool. So you can go in here to BPR. And we move that light here. It'll cast a, it'll be a shadow catcher. It'll catch a, cast a shadow on the ground right underneath your object. So that's, that's the purpose of that, or one of the purposes of that. Go ahead and turn our floor off. But now that we have this all set, let's do another merge visible. And now you're going to see our merge visible subtools here. I'm going to go ahead and select it. And if we turn our floor back on again, if I go over here to deformation unify, it's going to put this object's bounding box right at the world center where it's just where I want it. And the reason I'm doing that is because, well, I guess I can show you. I'm going to undo that. And it's not at uh, world zero, zero, zero. And I'm going to leave my floor on as well. And I'm going to turn perspective on. Let's say you were working in perspective. So if I have it set up like this, and I go over here to cam view, make cam view, and then we look at what it captured over here, you're going to see it's way off center. The object's hopping all around. The floor's visible. I have perspective turned on, which uh, isn't terrible, but you know, for the orthographic views, it's probably not ideal. So there's a whole lot of problems with this. So number one, I'm going to turn perspective off so we can get nice, clean orthographic views when we capture. I'm going to turn the floor off because I don't need to see the floor. And again, if I go to deformation unify, and now I do cam view, make cam view, we get a much cleaner capture. You're going to see it's going to be centered right on there. And everything's working pretty good. And if you're really liking this, at this point, you could go over here to your texture, make sure you go to export, and then save it as you know, something specific. And I'm going to tell you that we still got a few problems I want to fix. Number one, it's a little bit dark. Even if I go in here and make this larger, uh, it's kind of hard to tell uh, what's going on. I want to change the material. Another thing that's going on, and it's kind of hard to tell uh, because the background's the same. If I go over here to my document and I change my background, so I'm going to click on back and I'm just going to move around my object here. You're going to see as my background, background changes, oh, the cam view has a built-in color. So ideally, you know, I'd have a nice transparent or transparency built into my objects, which I can totally do. And I don't have my arrows yet, but we'll talk about that. Let's go over here to texture off again. And let's, let's keep trying. For the transparency, it's actually pretty easy. If I go over here to document back and I choose a pitch black, I can go in here and I can choose a black or I can just grab this one right here. Now I have a pure black background. So we're here to make cam view. Now you're gonna see I have transparency because now if I go in here to my document back, I have transparency. Now you're gonna see, well, Oh, I can also see through the neck, even though, uh, you know, I don't want this part to be transparent. The reason this part is transparent is because that rendered as pure black. In order to kind of fix that, one thing you can do is go into render, preview shadows, and turn off deep shadow, and that'll kind of lighten up some of these shadows. You can actually go in here and change some of your material settings. Right now we have uh, the startup material selected. Now when we did color fill, we didn't do mRGB because that would have filled with the material. Uh, we just did RGB. So with that, I can actually go through here and change this to uh, any sort of material that I want. Uh, we'll stay with the startup material. I'll grab the material menu. Let's drag it over here. We'll go into modifiers. And we can try doing like intensity, intensity A to kind of bring up this intensity, make it a little bit easier to see. And we'll go ahead and grab the render menu as well. Just click and drag this over here. If you go into BPR shadow, we've already turned off deep shadow. You can also go over here to render properties and you can turn off shadows uh, all together. So if that's a little bit easier to see, you can definitely do that. Like I said before, you can change this to whatever material you'd like. So if you want to go down to like, say a basic material, uh, this one's not a matte cap. So you have a few more options. If you crank up that ambient, you're going to see that also gets rid of a lot of your dark dark. So none of this is going to render as transparency because it has to be pure black in order to render as transparent. So you can play around with that ambient setting and we've, we've moved the light around. So if you go into your light menu and you kind of move this around, you can get a little bit of uh, more neutral lighting. Let's go ahead and put this up upper left here. Uh, the fuse will go ahead and crank up so we can see a little bit more of that. You can even go in here and make it a little more specular so you can see the volumes of your shapes a little bit better. 
If you go in here to specular curve, you can change the fall off of that. And if you want more information on uh, kind of playing around with custom materials to get a really cool custom effect, uh, you can go into my YouTube playlist and you can go to the ZBrush Guide Stylized Rendering playlist or the ZBrush 2019 What's New playlist. And this goes over a bunch of different uh, render settings for like cell shaded rendering and ink rendering and stuff like that. If you want a little sneak preview of that, you can actually go over here to the mixer and you can say, you know what, I want to posterize this just to simplify, you know, a little bit. Or you can go in here and you just crank up an outline. You know, this is all real time stuff. You can also do it in the shader. So a lot of different ways to achieve, a, uh, you know, an inky outline effect like that. And you know what, I kind of like that. So we'll go ahead and leave that. So we've updated this looking a lot better. So I'm going to go over here to our, let's go ahead and close these menus out of here. And we'll go back to our preferences. Oops, I forgot. We have to make our background pure black. So I'm going to grab this, go to pure black, document, back, select the pure black, now make cam view. There we go. So now we have our, grab black, maybe a little dark gray. Now we have our transparent. It's not transparent uh, through the neck anymore. And we can see our model much better.